Okay, today I'm going to talk to you about protein synthesis. Proteins are really important molecules within our bodies. All of the enzymes in our bodies that catalyze chemical reactions are, are examples of proteins. We also find proteins make up lots of our muscle and skin. And also they're within me uh, membranes and some of certain hormones are protein based as well. Synthesis means making. So all protein synthesis means is making proteins and we're going to see how that works in our bodies. So what I'm drawing right here is a nucleus, okay? So this is within a cell. This part here is the nucleus and just outside this part here we have, oops, sorry, we have this cytoplasm. Now, within our nucleus we have our DNA. So, Remember the DNA is our double helix, that's the kind of uh, twisted ladder shape um, where all of our genetic information is stored. Now, we also have this other structure over here called a ribosome. Now what a ribosome is, is this is the actual the site of protein synthesis. Now, let's imagine we needed a new, an, another enzyme. We need to make a new enzyme. Let's say some prote a protease enzyme. So let's say we're running low of protease enzymes in our body. We need to make some more. So the genetic information of how to make this particular enzyme, this particular protein, is within this DNA molecule, within the code of this DNA molecule. So what we need to do is we need to take this, uh, this gene for protease, of how to make protease, and we need to take it to the ribosome over here, because this ribosome is where protein synthesis actually occurs, okay? Now, the problem is, this DNA molecule is very, very long and winding. It contains thousands of different genes. Protease is just one of the many, many genes that's going to be in this DNA code. So this DNA is too big to fit through this nuclear pore, so that's just a hole in the nucleus, and get to the ribosome. So we need to do something else. Now, this is what happens. So first of all, the hydrogen bonds between this DNA strand unzip. So the hydrogen bonds break, and this DNA strand comes apart, okay? Now, what I've got on here is I'm just going to imagine that these are my bases here. So let's say we'll have a couple of Cs, a couple of A's, um, we need a C and a G. Now I've just come up with a random code here, okay? Now, let's say that this is the gene for how to make protease. Remember, a gene is a list of instructions of how to make a particular protein. Now, remember, we need to get this information of how to make this, pro uh, this protein out through the nuclear pore and to the ribosome. So how do we do this? Now this part is really clever. We form a complementary strand of mRNA. Okay, so whenever we have C, it goes with G. Whenever we have G, remember it pairs with C. So this is why it's called complementary. Um, oops, I've done that C in the wrong color, my bad. Okay, now whenever I have A, on this mRNA strand, on this mRNA strand, we have something different instead. Instead of T, we have U. And that U stands for uracil. So it's just a different base on this mRNA strand. Apologies for that being the wrong color. It wasn't meant to be that color. So this mRNA strand is different from DNA because it's much, much shorter. It's only made of one strand and it's just got the information of how to make protease. It isn't all of the other genes as well that make up our genome. The M stands for messenger, because we want to carry this message from the nucleus to the ribosome so we can actually make this protein here. This process here is called transcription. Transcription, okay, so. Once we've managed to have this mRNA strand formed, it leaves the nucleus via a nuclear pore and goes to a ribosome which is situated within the cytoplasm.
Now I'm just going to draw this strand down here just because I've got some space to do it here, okay? But remember, this would be happening at the ribosome. Now also, please keep in mind that in reality, this would be much, much longer than just six bases. I'm just drawing six just for sake of ease right now, okay? So in reality, it would be much, much, much longer than that, okay? Now, what we have here is a sequence of, of bases. Now, each three bases is referred to as a base triplet or a codon. Now, this codon is the code for a particular amino acid. So whenever you got these three bases together, it means you'd always get a particular amino acid. So how do our amino acids actually get attached and joined together? Now, this is clever. This is through something called tRNA. So we'll see how this works in a minute, okay? So tRNA. The T here stands for transfer because it transfers the amino acids um, to the base sequence. It also, th uh, this is where all of these amino acids get joined together because amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So, this is what we start to have, okay, G, A, and C. Now, if we have this codon, it means this tRNA brings in, because it's got these kind of matching bases here, whenever we get this code, we will always get this amino acid. Let's say, for sake of argument, this amino acid is called serine. Okay, you don't need to know which bases code for which amino acids. However, this base triplet here, this could be the code for a different amino acid. So again, we've got our tRNA, but this time it could be, for example, glycine. So we can see that the code, these codons, are the code for these particular amino acids. And at the ribosome, this is the thing that joins these different amino acids together in sequence. Now in reality, we'd have many, many more amino acids than just two. We'd have loads and loads of different amino acids all joined together in sequence by these peptide bonds. So loads and loads of these different amino acids all joined up in sequence. So we've nearly finished. We've now got a polypeptide, which just means many amino acids all joined together. Poly, meaning many, many. Peptide is to do with proteins, okay? So many joined together. Now, the very final thing we need to do is we know this protease, it's an enzyme. We know enzymes have got a very specific structure that allows a substrate molecule to fit into their active site. So the very final step, once we have this polypeptide, it folds into its really, really specific shape, okay? So it's 3D structure. So just to recap, oh, one thing I forgot to mention as well, this process here uh, that's happening to connect all of these um, amino acids together is called translation. So a quick recap. The whole part, um, this all starts in the nucleus, where we need to get the genetic information to a ribosome. The DNA molecule unzips and we form a strand of mRNA. mRNA has uracil instead of thymine. The mRNA leaves the nucleus via a nuclear pore and goes to a ribosome, which is the site of protein synthesis. We then have each base triplet is the code for a particular amino acid, which is brought to us by tRNA, T standing for transfer. These different amino acids form these peptide bonds to make this thing here called a polypeptide, which then folds into its complex 3D structure so it can perform its specific job. Thank you.